Welcome to another video about the Cohesity data management platform. Uh, I'm Alistair Cook and I'm continuing to play around with the Cohesity implementation that I have using the virtual edition inside my lab. In a previous video I showed the ability to set up tiering and uh, archives to the cloud and now enough time has passed that we've actually got some archives have occurred. You can see here in the middle of the health uh, that we've got 13 gigabytes of data sitting up on the cloud. Uh, that's because we've had over 80% utilization on the local storage and so things are being tiered up to the cloud. Of course we need that additional 20% capacity headroom because it takes time to get data up to the cloud. Two things I'm going to do. One is that I'm going to take a quick look at my S3 bucket that is, is taking this uh, overflow data. And then I'm actually going to increase the size of my Cohesity uh, appliance. The physical appliances, you would just add an, an additional node to your Cohesity cluster to expand the capacity. But the virtual edition doesn't support clustering of the nodes. It's a single node implementation. So there is a mechanism that we can use to expand the capacity attached to that single node. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's start off by taking a look in AWS S3 and see that 13 gigabits of, of data. So back here is my AWS Management Console. I have this Demitask Cohesity tier, which is where my cluster is uh, storing that overflow. Inside the bucket, there's now actually some content. Previously, it was completely empty, but now I've got a Cohesity folder and inside Cloud Spill, so it's some overflow or overspill. And then there's some uh, GUID stamping in there. I haven't actually checked to see what that uh, numbering stamping is. And it keeps, uh, keeps getting down and down and down, and we eventually find that there are bunches of folders containing chunks of data and then we get through to these relatively small compressed and deduped chunks that haven't been used for a fairly long period of time on my Cohesity cluster. So as you'd expect there's a dedupe store, it's got chunks of data inside it, the chunks are fairly plentiful which is good because then they can be migrated in small units at a time up into the, the cloud rather than having to use large chunks of data at a time. So the 8 megs is a sort of fairly moderate sized um, amount. So that's great, it's wonderful that we can push data out onto some very low cost storage in the AWS cloud but maybe I want to keep more of my data local, maybe this is actually a red flag for me that I haven't provisioned a large enough appliance to keep all of my, uh, my retained recovery points on premises. Remember that I'm sending my archives to Glacier which is even cheaper, but this is my actual recent backup data and I've seen this kick up and down a little bit. 80% utilization seems to be um, about where, where my environment sits over time. Uh, this appliance has actually been shut down for a couple of days which is why uh, the, the stats are, are a bit flat in the past. But the usage on the cluster seems to sit somewhere around 500 gigabytes so I should probably add another 100 gigabytes of storage to my appliance. Instructions on how to do this are in the Cohesity uh, user guide. There's some notes on extending the virtual appliance. So they, they start up here and they talk about extending the capabilities of the virtual edition on VMware. And they talk about this Cohesity CLI. Real easy to get to the CLI. Just come down here to the bottom of the page and you say I want to download the CLI and you download either your Windows, Linux, or Mac OS X version. I'm sitting on a Windows 7 virtual machine at the moment, so I just download the CLI, and it drops into my Downloads folder. And of course, there's already a version there in place because I've been playing already. So if I go into my Downloads folder, and I run my Eris CLI, that's, there we go. Oh, now I've got to remember the commands. Ha! Ah, help. Look, there's a whole bunch of commands. The important one for me is to be going to the server, and it is the co cluster.d.local. Uh, username is uh, username administrator. I'm fairly sure I specify a domain name in here. 
the help is is ordered by alphabetical and so there we go it's a domain uh, the help is alphabetical rather than group which is not my favorite one and there is no interactive password I don't believe let's just check the password help yeah specify a string default is admin because of course the default user ID is also admin but you'll remember that I added to my domain so uh, I need to put a password in here wait one corner while I type in my password once I entered my password and hit enter I'm here on my cluster so I can do things like asking for the cluster status and because I'm running a, a remote command line the command runs on my cluster and then returns the output you did see a pause there um, as far as I can make out that's that the command completes in its entirety and then you get the entire response back there is a mechanism for running the command line directly on the cluster in a console on the cluster and my understanding is that's what the Cohesity support team will do rather than something that we as users of the environment will do. We will use this remote command line. So I can see my, my cluster status. I can get my node list if I remember correctly. There's my nodes. I can see that I've got 584 gigabytes of, of in quotes, SATA hard drive attached to this uh, one node that I have along with um, 50 gigabytes of PCIe SSD and essentially an infinite 10 petabytes of cloud storage available. Excellent, wonderful, so the command line works. According to the instructions in here, the next thing that I need to do is to power off my virtual machine. Okay, Power it off and then edit settings. Uh, there does not appear to be a way to gracefully shut the machine down in vSphere. So I come into my vSphere client and I'm just going to follow the instructions and power off the virtual machine. When it powers off, I'm going to follow the instructions again and I'm going to edit settings on my virtual machine. Find the third hard drive. So we have three hard drives on the virtual machine. The first one is the OS drive, the second one is the cache tier, and the third one is my storage or capacity tier. So it's currently 600 gigabytes. I'm going to make it 700 gigabytes. Close that. Uh, find the OK button on here. Wait for the task to complete and allow me to power the machine back on again. And then I power it on. Okay. Don't change hard drive one. Don't change hard drive one, which is the boot disk but you can change both the capacity and the performance tier. Okay. You can also change the number of CPUs uh, and the amount of memory. There is a note a little further above about the different capacity sizes so small, large and absolute maximum allowable. I'm just making a small increase to the amount of um, capacity storage that I have. So I'm staying inside the small configuration. I'm only going up to 700 gigabytes. Then of course, because I'm booting the system from cold, I'm going to need to leave it for a little while to warm up. So again, no need for you to wait for that. In about 10 minutes time, I'll come back and uh, we'll carry on with this process of expanding the capacity and making that additional hard drive space available to our Cohesity cluster. Well, it turns out it only took about two minutes for the user interface to come up and one minute for a plane to fly over. And you can see that now I'm using even more of the capacity in the cloud and I'm still only seeing 612 gigabytes of storage available to the cluster. Uh, this is because there's still a command line process to go to get, get myself actually connected. Uh, really interesting thing will be to see whether that CLI is still connected. Uh, cluster status, will it return for me or is it going to fail because my connection to the cluster has been lost? There we go, cluster is still there, cluster is all operational. Alright, but that's not what we want, so our next stage is to stop the cluster and then do a node list. So what have we got? Step 14, stop the cluster, 
15 node list disk extend. All right. So if we do a cluster stop, give it a moment or three to stop all the services. Let's see what the cluster status gives us in terms of running services. So right now all of the services are still uh, still operational, so we'll give them a, a little bit longer. Of course, if this was the physical appliance, there would be more than one node. We just have the one node ID that's listed in here, this, this node number here. It's the only one that we have, and um, that would not be the case if we had a, a full physical cluster with multiple nodes. But virtual appliance is a special case. Right now we're starting to see some of the services stopping. And what we should be able to do is then take this disk extend, copy that, paste it to there. Node ID is our one node. So copy that, paste it in. Request that extend. Do, 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 do. The request was accepted. That's great. Now we do a disk ls. And we still see somewhere. Where do we go? 50 gigabytes, SATA hard drive, 584. It's still showing. So what the instructions say is to keep repeating this command until our physical maximum capacity matches what's set up can take up to 10 minutes. And that's been my experience. It does take some time for the uh, available capacity to change from that 584 gigabytes to now 690 gigabytes. So we've now got here our maximum physical capacity of 690 as we wanted. And so we then do a cluster start, start all the services back up again. And naturally the cluster start it will take a little while as well as all of the services need to come up. So we'll give that a couple of minutes and then we'll see what our cluster looks like. Well, it's been more than a couple of minutes. It's actually been a couple of days. Unfortunately, life got in the way and I didn't uh, get back to, f to finishing this on Monday when I started this. So let's take a look at how our cluster is now. It's certainly had enough time to settle down and it should show us um, things running and all the services are up and then uh, if we do a node ls we should see that 690 gigabytes of uh, capacity now so we've definitely had that expansion of the disk and if I take a look inside the cluster and log on We can see now that there's 717 gigabytes of capacity in my cluster. You'll remember that before I expanded by 100 gigabytes, there was 612 gigabytes available. Fairly simple process. Uh, the thing that I did notice is that on the virtual appliance, it can be reasonably intrusive. So when that disk expansion is going on and when this, the cluster first starts, there's going to be a high load on that disk. It's going to be busy for a while. And because it's only a single node cluster here, the cluster is actually going to be out of operation for a period of time. So definitely going to be some uh, impact to, to service, but of course, generally you're going to do that at a time uh, that's in a maintenance window and that the rate of change is going to be fairly low. So if you do find yourself running out of space in your Cohesity Virtual Edition, uh, it is a relatively simple process to shut the appliance down and increase the size of the, the, the disk, the capacity disk, and then to expand the use of that capacity disk using the command line. Once again, reasonably uh, simple processes. Sure, it'd be great if it was in the GUI, but this isn't really something that you do terribly often, so a CLI is good, and of course we have a nice CLI available to us with Cohesity. Stay tuned for some more videos on uh, features and my experience with using the Cohesity platform. Next thing I plan to do is to uh, stick together my two appliances that are in my two different labs and uh, set some replication up between them so we can look at it what, it's, what it's like if I'm in a branch office 
running the virtual appliance and I'm replicating back to central office where I probably have physical appliances in play and a much larger scaled out cluster of cohesity appliances as the, the central backup repository. So that's the, the thing I plan to do next is replication between two cohesity clusters. Thanks for joining me. Keep an eye out for more videos. Talk to you later.